Or we could say, yeah, I got this gift, but I'm going to sit on this gift. Yeah. And, um, you know, there are, there are consequences that we deal with when we don't use the gift, right? Mm-hmm. Um, gifts, um, plural. Yes. And so um, I am of the mindset that everything we need has already been given to us. Yeah. And it is up to us um, to walk in it, to embrace it. Um, to live it out. And Tereska, if I heard you correctly in the beginning of the show, you talked about abundance, right? Yes. And it is God, our creator's intent yes. that all of us experience abundance, yes. right? That we have more than enough, that we live in an overflow yes. um, of access, of beauty, of joy, right? Of love, of healing, um, of of all that is wonderful when when we talk about abundance. Um, and, you know, I like to think that in terms of abundance, um, that that means there should be nothing lacking, right? Mm-hmm. Nothing lacking. And so because we are connected to the connector who is the creator, then therefore, as those who are connected to the connector and the creator, that we too have power. And right. Yeah. And as we as we as we are living in the power that is rightfully, divinely, supernaturally <laughs> ours. So we take um uh, a part in how we administer it, how we experience it. So um, when we talk about discernment, right, um, I kind of introduced it just a little bit last week. Um, Why were the gifts given? How to um, appropriate them? Um, They weren't given just for the sake, oh, this is just something nice. No, it has a purpose. Mm -hmm. It has a purpose in it behooves us to understand the purpose so that we can definitely um, experience it on a level um, that is intended for us to experience it. Let me say, let me just plain and simple. All right. That's just, let's get right down to the nitty gritty. Get there. (laughs) All right. So, so um, the gift of discernment, I believe is the catalyst um, that gives us spiritual insight is the catalyst that gives us insight into the into the realm of the spirit because it talks about um, the uh, discernment in terms of the gifts discerning the spirits discerning spirits again plural right mm-hmm. and so discernment um, it gives us a certain kind of freedom. There's, there's freedom that comes with the ability be, to be able to see into another realm. Mm-hmm. Um, and the sermon opens up the gateway, opens up the doorway for us to have an understanding of things that are around us, things that are to be. It gives us the ability to distinguish um, <laughs> that which is good, that which is evil, that which is light, that which is darkness, that which is harmful, that which is of good intentions mm-hmm. um, and motivation. And it helps us to uh, distinguish between true and falsehoods. That's the gift that we are given. We we can master that thing, right? So with discernment, we can walk into a room and we can survey the spirits that are in the room, whether those spirits are good in if they have goodwill towards mankind when we walk into that room. Yes. Yes. That's the power of the sermon. Yes. And then also the sermon is there, um, I, I believe, as a protector. The sermon gives you protection. Yeah. So that you are not caught off guard, and then you are engaging 
in either conversation, uh, either a, a spirit to spirit um, combat, combat um, interaction with that that's, that does not prosper you at the end of it. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. That just it doesn't uplift you. Mm-hmm. It's not there to um, uh, motivate you. It's not there to help assist you. It's not there to be a bridge for you to cross over, but it's there to block you. So you'll be able to discern. Yes. Mm. What is this really here? What am I working with? Mm. And then you can decide how to proceed. Yeah. That's the joy and the power of discernment, right? Some people call it the sixth sense. Mm. You know, you know? We, 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 we're, are we taught? And, and I mean, we as a whole, not just, are we taught the, the different gifts? And do we take for granted the gifts, the gift of discernment? People just think is, oh, it's natural. I mean, we do that anyway. Yeah, <laughs> we do it, but it's a, it's, it's a, it's a spiritual gift that has been given to us by God. I, do you yeah. do you run across this across the country? I know you speak at a lot of places. Do do people really understand that these are gifts that we have? I think that from my experience, right? People know of the gifts, but they don't know how the gifts impact their experience in their lives and other lives, right. right? Other people's lives. They know, okay, I've heard of the gift of discernment or intuition, you know, insight, right? I heard of it. However, what does that really look like? What does that really feel like? How do I fully walk in that, live in that? How do I experience that, right? And then you have some people who who's afraid of it. Because some people don't want to feel like they're going to be exposed. Mm. So they tend to shy away from certain gifts because they are intimidated by those gifts. So you ask the question, right? Are they, t- uh, can you learn the gifts? I think you were asking, can you learn them? Are they taught? Right? Yeah, 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 I was saying basically they're, they're not really taught. So we don't put as much value on some of the things that are actually spiritual gifts. We just kind of walk through life like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's not a good person. Well, how'd you know that? I just I mm-hmm. felt it. But we don't even know. And my point was, gotcha. Pastor, you've been all over the country speaking. And do you run across people who just don't realize what they have? Right. They don't realize the full aptitude yeah. of yes. what it yes. is that they yes. possess. Yes. Yeah. They really don't. Because I think, Jason, if they really did fully understand it, yes. that they would definitely um, embrace it more and be able to identify where it comes from. And be able to pinpoint, right, the spirit that is operating through them, yes, who's given them that very gift. And that's what, and let me just say this, Bridget, that's what mm-hmm. people that who are living by the spirit should be intentional about the gifts, intentional about doing just what you said. Those are, those are ways to intentionally be better in these things, you know, and if we really are are about the spirit and about building our our uh our growing in the spirit then we will be intentional about these certain things and especially these gifts that were freely given to us well pastor going <laughs> best going i want to i want to reset right quick if you've just joined us i am jason medlock i'm your host uh you're listening to i'm woke we have the beautiful Tereska harrison uh the contrib- contributor on the show we have our guest pastor bridget goings uh, who is speaking about spiritual gifts in a two-part series. We're on uh, series uh, part number two. Pastor, we have a, uh, uh, a comment from a guest. Uh, our grandmothers, mothers, and ancestors always told us that if you have that unction, that, that hunch, if that is a word, that is the spirit. If you have that, you know, that, that feeling, then that's the spirit talking to you. And we're talking about discernment, so... Um, Tosca Medlock Lee had that comment for you. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I believe, I, I simply believe that because we are connected spiritually, I, I had this conversation with a good friend of mine the other day, we were talking about 
being spirit beings, right? Right. And when we die, the 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 flesh, right? The the shell that we're in goes back to the earth. Uh-huh. But the spirit lives on forever and ever and ever. Uh-huh. Right. And so that spirit is familiar uh-huh. with the spirit realm. Uh-huh. With the unveiling, the revelatory knowledge goes back to that mm-hmm. and being able to discern that spirit rim yeah. and where others are coming from, mm-hmm. even as people it, and even you talk about traveling, right? Traveling spirits. You can you can you can understand um, because you are a spirit being connected to the ultimate spirit that God is a spirit. Yes. Right. God is a spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, And we are connected to the originator, (laughs) the master, uh, the master himself, God, who is spirit. Um, And by way of his spirit, which we call the Holy Spirit, those of us who are Christians, um, we are able to understand. I believe you said that there was a. a question or I guess a comment about our grandparents, our mamas, our ancestors. They call it the unction. Yeah, that right? unction, you know, that, that, right. that the hunch. <laughs> and, and, right, the hunch, right, right. Um, and, and knowing that the spirit was telling them they was they was they was receiving it from the spirit, right? Mm-hmm. And they didn't they didn't identify it as the term we would call it discernment, but it's all the same. It's right, right. It's all the same because the outcome is the same. Yeah. And it's coming from the spirit of God that lives within us. Yes. That's the thing to, to understand. The spirit lives within us. Yes. So we got it. Um, but we just need to, I think, in order to fully appreciate it, um, to its ump degree, uh, taking us taking it up another notch, um, so that when we take it to that uh, other notch and we fully understand it, um, I think then we'll we'll use it we'll use it more. We we really will use it more. Um, I think, um, in in some cases, the gift of discernment is underused. Mm-hmm. It really is. It's underused. And if we would use it more, um, it really will help us sharpen in the area of decision making. Yes. Even when we talk about our purpose in life, even when we talk about our destiny, even talk about when we talk about where we headed, where we're going. Yes. Right. We wouldn't have I would call you know get get so off balance and have that um, you know that equilibrium you know off balance and 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 we're not walking in sync. Can, you because know, you, we're not understanding what the sermon is there for to help us make those decisions. Let, let's yeah. imagine that our school systems were based on spirituality and that mm-hmm. in all our classes, we had our classes on the gift of discernment and we had another class on the gift of knowledge. And let's just imagine if we're taught every spiritual, every uh, religious uh, uh, tool uh, from a academia standpoint, how would the world be? It'd be a whole different world. <laughs> and, different and, and then we have people, we know that these are gifts because we have people who don't really haven't tuned into their gift of discernment. And obviously that's why we have prisons. That's why, that's why we have mass murder. That's why we have yeah. people that are off track and out of tune with God and out of touch. Mm-hmm. So Pastor like Goins. That. Out of tune. I like that, Jason. Out of tune. So just. But you know what? Let me just say, like Jason, that. to that, to your question. If sure. it was school, if it was in schools, every, just think about this. Everybody is, uh, would be at a level where they have mastered a gift. And just like you would master any type of physical, you know, gift or plan or whatever, when you practice, if you know, like I said, if you're intentional about a thing and you, you practice at it and you, you know, you study it and all the way through school, then you have a mastery state. You have mastered something. And at that level, it is almost out of this world. So if you find somebody that's at that level, you would think they were weird for one thing and just out of this world, you know, not, a, you know. That's yeah. what you would think. Yeah, you would think that. And, you know, uh, again, how much different would the world be when you have, um, 
you know, schools, uh, school districts that are based in spirituality. Now we learn, you know, calculus, we learn geometry, you learn the, the numbers, uh, the system to equate the universe, but the thrust of all the, uh, the, the, the lessons and the, the information and knowledge would be based on spirituality. And you have, and, and if you, if you looked at that and you said, how would the world look? That would be very interesting. That'd be a great paper to write and maybe even a great book. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. And what comes to mind is um, discernment will help us to to mm-hmm. get back on track. Right. Yes. When we're off track, when we when I talked about being off, off centered and it's like it's a it's a radar. It's like ding, 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 ding. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and it's like help, telling, you know, helping you to sense, OK. Okay, girl. Okay, fella. Let's get centered. Come back. You know, you're going out too far. You're going mm-hmm. too too deep. You no, know, you're not. You're going too deep, and you need to come back because you're you're lacking some things. And so it it helps you to perceive um, character. Also, um, when you think about even in school, Jason, mm-hmm. with our students, I think it would help even our students to be able to perceive. A character, right, and better understand um, what character uh, to model as opposed to what character not to model, even in education. Um, what the, the ability to judge accurately as well. That's what discernment does too. Help you to be able to judge, not judge, be judgmental, but to judge, right? Um, where do I go from here? How do I rightly appropriate what I am learning in this um, environment, right? Mm-hmm. So discernment, you know, it, it's like it it detects even those hidden things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah. know, even yeah. even even if it's now. being masked, <laughs> you know, even if it's being masked, mm-hmm. but it, it it helps to detect it, you know. Yes. Again, that's I said it's a radar, like. Ooh, Yes, that's Something good. behind well, that curtain. I know what's behind that curtain. That's good. You know, like the Wizard of Oz, the dude behind the curtain, right? Wait a minute. I know what I know who's behind there. <laughs> well, I, I want to say this that discernment could also lead you to understand different gifts that you may have and you never knew. True. Uh, and I know my sister Tereska doesn't mind, but I always felt that she was empathic. Um, but she's recently found found out that you know what, I am an empath. You know, and but her discernment level is off the charts. But when you're an empath, you feel you feel. Yeah, you feel at a at a level that other people just don't. And you observe and and, and things come to you. So Mm -hmm. if you're listening out there, you could have a a level of feeling and you Mm -hmm. wonder, why do I always feel people's emotions? And that's a level of discernment too, uh, a pastor. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. also, you know, there's another term for it as well. So you you, you have to really, really be in tune with yourself to sort of uh, understand if you if you are experiencing a different type of tool of spirituality. And and you know what? You you have to be able to um, celebrate that gift that you have. And and I I mean, really, really fully embrace it. At, a, at its max, I'm serious. I I was, I was listening to something, uh, um, just recently, and they were talking about the gift of prophecy, and when you know that you have the gift of, uh, you're prophetic in in your gifting in, in in nature, spiritual nature, um, how you need to really embrace it and celebrate it and not shrink back from it. Yeah. And as one who 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 walks and operate in the gift of discernment of spirits and and you know you talked about you know empath and and, and being able to feel um um and 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 being able to tap into that realm mm-hmm. it is not just for you right it's for right. you to be able to help change the world 
Yes. Because that's what it's really all about. You being the world changer. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and an influencer. And you know, and, and, if another person t- asks me, man, you, you, you need to take this uh, big time. What's big time? We This is big time for us. We love coming up with topics that can help people, you know, uh, reach a different part of themselves. You know, right. reach a different part yeah. of... Change one person at a time. Well, yeah. or, 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 or be someone who can provide information for it that a person can do it themselves. I mean, basically you're in charge of your own destiny of your own awakening. Right. And you know, you can be guided a certain way, but no one can be a policeman for you. Uh, this is something yes. that has to call you and you have to be, a, have to be ready to answer the call. Yes. And Jason, but also, um, and I'm, then I'm going to move on to, um, yes, the gift healing. of healing. Right. Healing. Then we're going to talk about the gifts <laughs> of healing, but I want to say this too. Um, when you talk about you, you are the one that you, you have the say so. Right. Mm -hmm. Because all the tools, everything that, and I started off by saying that, remember I said, you have everything you could ever need. Mm -hmm. It's already there. It's already in you. Mm -hmm. And you also have the mechanisms out here to help you even get through it, even if you get you get stuck to help you to help you increase it, yeah. to help you become more aware of it. Mm-hmm. Right. To help you master it. Yes. <laughs> and we talked yeah. about last week. We talked about a few things that help you get there. We talked about love. Yeah. You know, create more light and put it in your in your in right in the middle of your heart. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know? Right. 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 So, and I'm just going to say this, I'm going to sum it up. What it's all about is seeing beyond the naked eye. Right. Yes. Discernment. All okay. right. Okay. That's good. That's good. All right. Let's go. All right. Let's and go so, with it. We, hey, yeah. we, we, you know what? We, we don't have a clock on you. We're just I listening. Know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I look, I'm looking down like, oh, okay. I see what time it is. But nonetheless, <laughs> the gifts of healing. Mm. It didn't say the gift of yeah. healing, the gifts, mm. oral. Okay. Yeah. Right. So when we talk about healing and of course, Jason, you know about the different modalities of healing, you yes. know, energy healing, et cetera, all the different types of healing. Yeah. Right. I, j- just, so. just a disclaimer um, uh, about uh, a month ago, I was certified as a galactic uh, energy healer. So I, mm. I'm very, very, um, uh, at a place where yeah, power is, you know, among us, it, uh, power is among me. I mean, we can use all of these different uh, healing energies and healing gifts if we only would practice it, if we only would believe in it, and if we only would understand that these gifts were given to us by God. And um, gifts of healing is yes. absolutely right. Reiki, um, galactic. You name it, uh, it's out there and people are using it and it works. Yeah. So when we talk about gifts of healing, right? We're talking about, okay, the various aspects of healing. Healing of mind. Yes. Healing of the soul. Healings of the body. Healings of the emotions, right? Healings of the heart. Right. It it all boils down to the supernatural ability to be able to soothe those parts that have been injured. Yes, yes. That have that's experiencing um, what we call infirmities, um, um, and so we have the ability through the gifts of healing, and and some of that, um, in, even in uh, you know those who who operate in certain aspects of the gifts herbalists Mm -hmm. you see Mm. they can help that healing um you know taking it giving your alternative experience yes Um, i have a good friend who's an herbalist and it's funny because she's an herbalist and well she's she's studying to be an herbalist but spirituality is has crept into every part of her life you know, and when you start to dabble in natural things like herbs and and uh, natural energy healing, I mean, it, it creates a, a another uh, avenue 
uh, for God to really, really intervene in your life. Uh, but but yeah. those are closely connected. Just, you know. And another one more thing, Pastor, even a crystal shop owner, most of the people who own crystal shops, they have a deep connection with spirituality as well. So when you said herbalist, you know, being connected that way, uh, that's often true. And and signs that you have the gift of healing, I would say one would be a strong desire to see people healed. Yes. It's one of the signs. You have a strong urge, uh, a strong pulling. Something in you doesn't rest until you can see people healed, that you can point them towards the way of healing. You're a healer. Mm. You're a healer. Um, The other one is, another sign is that you are an encourager of healing, Mm. right? You see things, you're like, okay, I learned something today. I learned that this can help you or that can help you, right? You are a messenger. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You are a healer, right? Um, The other one is that you gravitate to all things healing, right? It just comes to you. It's it's like second nature. It's Mm. it's like a pulling. Mm. You you, you can't resist it. It's so strong in you. Those are signs that you have the gift of healing. Wow. You dream it. You eat it. You sleep with it. It's all things healing. You that that says to you, you know, you are a healer, and remember, there are different ways mm-hmm. in which we heal, and we're not just talking about a traditional way of healing, but you you can heal by way of touch. Yes, you see, um, just putting your hand, you can put your hand on somebody's shoulder. You don't know that's that can be healing for somebody. Mm-hmm. You you're transmitting healing. Even through the way you smile, mm-hmm. you can have such a, 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 like a awesome and magnetic. I mean, it's I like magnetic. That. It's like fire. Yeah, a person see you smile. You can walk into their space and you smile, and you can change their whole outcome. Yes, and they feel healed. Mm-hmm. In terms, when I'm talking about the way healing is transmitted, different ways is transmitted. It's transmitted even through the arts. Mm-hmm. We're talking about the gifts of healing. Yes. You can see a person paint something. You can see a painting and you can be healed through that painting. You can be healed even through comedy. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. Comedy. Yes. You can be healed that way. You can be healed through storytelling, which mm-hmm. I love. I, I can, you know, <laughs> that's my thing with her story. Healing is transmitted through different songs. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Oh, big time. Mm-hmm. Singing. Singing. Singing, ministering, and song. Mm-hmm. Release. All of this is releasing healing. Mm-hmm. Yes. People are being healed. The gifts of healing are in operation. Yes. And that's when you have, when you understand that healing is not one dimensional but it's multi dimensional yes <laughs> it's on all kinds of levels it is cuz at the end of it all somebody is feeling renewed yeah rejuvenated in mind soul and body emotions heart spirit whatever they are being healed because the person who is given the gifts of healing is fully in operation and fulfilling that gift so that they can bring about healing in a person's life. And also you can be healed by a person's presence. Mm-hmm. You understand that? Mm-hmm. The person don't have to do anything. It's sim- the simply their presence. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's powerful. <clears throat> that yes. you don't even have to lay hands on them. Just your presence. Your 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 spirit can bring healing you, to a person. And you know what? You're you're right, Pastor Going. So when that happens, or you know, what, what type of I guess I want to ask for the audience, what type of feeling is that when let's just say 
your favorite uncle comes into the room. And whenever he comes around, you I don't care if your mom made you mad or someone is just on your nerves. When he comes around, your favorite uncle, the, the just him being around makes you just feel so special. Like you're healed. What yes. is that? I mean, what yes. what's that whole thing look like? You know, obviously it's sort of like uh uh black matter in in, in, in space. We can't see it, but they say it's there. You know, mm-hmm. like what is this feeling? of healing that we get when people are around us is so simple, but it's actually a gift. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, you just described what it, what it's like when the uncle walks into the room, mm-hmm. but it's, it's like, you can't tangibly see it, but you know, it took place because of the results, yes. the outcome let you know that healing took place by that uncle's presence walking into that room. It was something about that uncle, something he carried in his spirit and his, all of his body language, you know, he brought it in there and he transmitted onto you because he has that gift of presence of healing. Oh, are we saying that energy, uh, can be transferred, uh, feelings of other people can be transferred. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. There we go. Yes. Yes. No doubt. Power. Absolutely it's so. Power. <laughs> yes, indeed. Absolutely so. <laughs> we have the power to walk into a room yes. and create the atmosphere for the room. Mm. Spirit knows spirit. You got it. <laughs> Absolutely that- so. Spirit knows spirit. That's that's yes. uh, that's a niece, uh, Doctor Niece Maston. Uh, Doctor yes. Niece will be on in a few weeks, and uh, she's uh, she's a big fan of yours. Uh, maybe she'll call in and join us in a little bit. And, uh, yes, and, spirit but, knows uh, spirit. Being yes. able to connect. Yes. That's why you say like mindedness. Yes. We connect. Yeah. You see, absolutely. so we know each other. Oh, absolutely. That's absolutely. what it is, and so healing brings balance. Hmm. It brings balance, mm-hmm. the gifts of healing. That's yes. at the at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we have balance and that we're walking in balance. Yeah, right. And so, for those of us who operate in the gifts of the spirit, um, just like I said, when we operating in the gifts of this in the gift of discernment, um, let us be fully awoke. Yes. Let us yes. be fully Please. awoke because, beloved, there are so many who are in need, especially in this in this dispensation and where we are right now in the earth. Yes. Of healing. Yes. Right. And we talk that love thing is connected with healing. Yes. Because love brings about healing as well. Yes. It really does. Yes, it does. So um, it's funny that I thought about a big hug, you know, like a big hug. Yes. I mean, just yes. hug, because, you know, h- hugging, it, it, not just touching, but hugging is healing in itself. Yes. There's so many people, when we, when we came out of the pandemic, that we talked, you know, oh. who just needed a hug, like who couldn't touch anybody, you couldn't touch people. But just actually need that touch. And I believe that we are creatures that need to be touched. <laughs> you, you, you took the word touch. Well, that's where I was going to go. Oh. <laughs> we, we are created in that we are relational people. Yes. We are communal people. Yes. Absolutely. You know, it's not about not, we're not, you know, it's not about the man on the island by him or herself. No, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. no man is an island, right? That's, right. What, that's what we're talking and, and that is very true. Exactly. You see, the scripture tells us from a Christian perspective, the hand can't say to, to the to the feet, we don't need you. No, we need all parts Yes. working together all to parts. bring about harmony, to bring about healing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. To bring about what we need as we're on our journey so yeah. that we can float, right? We can soar and we can live out our true purpose in the earth. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and at the end of the day, what this does, it brings glory to God. Yeah. It does. It brings glory to God and it brings us closer to God. 
I wanted, to add, I wanted to add an example of, about laughter. You said comedy brings uh, bring about healing. Uh, there was this woman who uh, she was had cancer, and one of the things she would do was he, she and her husband would watch. Um, they she would keep, they would watch comedy every mm-hmm. night. She would just laugh, 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 and all the other things she did with herbs and and that laughter cured her from her cancer. <laughs> Teresa. Yeah. The scripture reminds us too, laughter is medicine. Yes. It's medicine. Oh so I'm like, get your daily dose of medicine. Get your laugh on, right? My God. Absolutely so. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, you you hear the word and you hear all these things over and over and over. And yet we don't do them. Like Paul said, we don't do those things. <laughs> we tend to not, you know, we just turn against them sometimes and not really activate them like yeah. we should. Right. Because we we would be so much so much higher beings and so much better beings on yes. this earth if yes. we did. Absolutely so. And so, and the other thing, we have to take the limits off of ourselves mm-hmm. and stop being afraid mm-hmm. of what we have. Mm. Mm. Let fear go. Woo. Because fear is a big hindrance and a stopper Woo. from yes, us fear. really walking in those gifts. Yes, it is. And living them out. That's absolutely true. Oh, it's so real. It's so real. And just live out loud with it. I want to make sure you guys can hear me. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. Keep going. Oh, I thought you was going to say something, Jason. Yeah, live out loud with it. And walk in it with boldness. Hello? Hello. Be bold. Be courageous. Be. I mean, walk in it with a fierceness. Yeah. And look and hello, let me say this. Look for opportunities. Wow. Look for them. <laughs> look for them. <laughs> good. That's good. Stop That's running good. from them. Look for them. My God. Wow. And open yourself up. My God. That's okay, good. we have another one. Uh Yvonne. Uh, I think a person's connection with God and their faith brings the positive energy of our Lord through us in order to give others peace and hope. Hello. Mm-hmm. You are the vessel. You are the vessel mm-hmm. that God has chosen to use yes. for mm-hmm. it to come through to mm-hmm. bring you are the, to bring the the peace bearer, the yeah. peace carrier, mm-hmm. the hope carrier. You you bring it. You got the torch. Yeah, Yvonne, we got it. We all have it. <laughs> yeah. We all have it. Well, but everybody don't choose to use it. <laughs> right. And again, that's because of fear. And cause of fear. Get rid of the fear. Fear is fear is we deep. We are limitless. Listen, we are we are limitless. I'm serious. We are. Right. But we got to fully embrace our God selves. Well, because of life, and one of the things there was there has been breakdown through life. Some people, you know, through experiences and through negative experience, you know, issues going on through life can put you in a place yes. of, of, of negativity or put you in a place of depression or put you in a place where you need to be delivered, you know? Yes. And so therefore requiring that type of healing, uh, that's why the body is needed because people that can recognize that can, are those that can save you or help you through that whole process. I'll yes. tell you what, uh, people are very, yes. very, uh, uh, you know, revved up by your words, Pastor <laughs> going, uh, Yvonne came back and said, Hey man, I feel that. I stand strong in God. No fear. No it. fear. <laughs> no. And I can say that, Yvonne, because I've been on that street. Yeah. Let me tell you. Yeah. I've been on that street. And I have made a decision yeah. Yeah. in my life. As I have gotten older, yes. I have become more fierce. Yes. yes. I have become more intentional. Yes. And I have decided, you know what? I possess the power to heal myself. There's a scripture that says, physician, heal yourself. To heal myself because I got the keys. Yes. Come on now. I got the keys. Yes. God gave them to me. Come on now. God gave them to me. Yes, he did. Absolutely. Now, I just got to use them. That's it. Because listen to this. What good is it to have the keys to get in the house? Mm. And not use them. Exactly. And you stand outside saying, I need to get in my house, but you got the key to get in there. Wow. That's absolutely wow. You'll never get in there if you don't use the keys. You got to use the gifts. You have stop to practice. Climbing through the windows when you use have the, the gifts. Stop, stop climbing through the windows when you have No. Your 
But you know what, Pastor Goins, that's easy for you. I mean, you're a pastor and and you work your butt off to to build your relationship with God. Uh, Yeah, I work my butt off to build my relationship with God. I had to do the work first. I had to make sure that he knew that I wanted the relationship. So I prayed. So I thought nothing but love. So I thought nothing but light. So I had great discernment. I started to listen to my emotions. Yes, absolutely. That is what Pastor Goins is trying to say. You have to work at it. Get a work at Listen, it. I, Jason, I heard a word from T.D. Jakes a couple of weeks ago. Uh-huh. He said, it'll work if you work it. Okay? Yes, yes. It'll work if you work it. Bridget, on, uh, Pastor Bridget Goins, uh, Tosca has asked a question. Bridget, can you talk about her story and how the ministry is used for spiritual healing and how ordinary people break through their fear. Good, good question. Oh. oh, awesome, 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 awesome. Her story is a venue that allows um, women, right, from all, I told you, from all walks of life, right, from all kinds of backgrounds in terms yes. of stories. Um, and some of those stories have been locked in them because of fear she talked mm. about you know breaking through their ordin you know ordinary people breaking through their fear right mm. and how that heal that spiritual healing takes place it is through the ability of being free enough courageous enough to tell the story it is in the telling of the story that things are being unraveled mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. spiritually mm-hmm. And that, is, that is so awesome Listen, it is. And you can see it. There are moments, those of us who've been there, it's like you can you can see it. You can it, you can I mean visual visually, I'm sorry, visually see it. Yeah. It's like you can see the unraveling um of the things that have held them back. Yes. That that impede um their growth. Yes. Um that that's that that when they were stuck in pain yes, um yes. the hurt you can see it as they're telling their story that that shackles are like falling off of them mm. it's like you know um bandages are being released mm-hmm. in them telling their stories yes. and you can you can feel the atmosphere the room is filled with healing Yes. It's like, oh my gosh, it's such a it's such a powerful experience. You're talking about spirit knowing spirit. It's like the spirit of healing um comes in that environment mm-hmm. and just takes us to a higher dimension. Yes. Where we are in the presence of the beauty of all things, healing and miracles are mm-hmm. taking place, mm-hmm. and people's lives are shifting. Right. Transformation is taking place because in the midst of them telling their stories, they're helping other people. It's like you're grabbing other people, almost like hurry your tummy, so to speak. Come on, get out of here. You know, we're going we're going to take you, you know, through here. We, we, we're going to you know, we're here to help you, to rescue you, to yeah. take you through the underground railroad railroad. We are here. And so it's like through those stories. Yeah, you're you're feeling it. You're feeling it, and they're bringing you along their journey. Yeah, and like there's no fear in the room. Like you're like, wow. There's yeah. a place because we know where there is um the, where the spirit of liberty the, liberty is there, right? Mm. There's freedom. Yes. There's freedom. <laughs> yeah, that's the key. Where the spirit the is. The is freedom right because... where the spirit is. Don't, don't make me start singing my favorite song. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, well, there's, where the there's spirit freedom, is. There's freedom there because, you know, mainly is because you know that you're not the only one going through certain things. Yes. And when yes. someone gives their testimony, like the Bible says, we're overcome. You know, they're overcoming. Say people are, are freed and uh, delivered by your testimony because they can know that you've been set free, then I can be free too. Well, Yvonne, Yvonne says the same thing. Uh, she writes uh, as a response to no fear. It was a struggle that has taken me in this path in the mm-hmm. darkness, like a seed. God mm-hmm. pulled me through and transitioned me into a bigger and more beautiful person than before. Awesome. And wow. it is awesome. Uh, beautiful. <laughs> and it sounds like a testimony because it is a testimony and people and people want to, you know, 
I guess people say, well, how can I do it? But people are telling you how to do it. And, and, and you get people give beautiful testimonies like this. It's because they they had to take the time to slow down, Bridget, and just feel and just listen. Um, those are very, very critical when you're trying to yes. take that next step with the. Uh, yes. With, with yes. your, you know, with your, with your, with your God. But I had to tell you with her story, there, there have been some, some hard stories. There mm-hmm. have been some, some terrible things that have happened to women and, and how they overcame came these issues and the, the problems of the situations that they've got, that they, they got into, you know, it's just mind boggling how the Lord brought them out and how they have evolved from that, you know, to, to do all kinds of things. And it's, you know. And, and, the, and the lovely thing about that is this, because we're talking about healing, right? Yeah. You're sitting there. You're listening. Yeah. And what that does is like it opens up a pathway. Yes, it does. It opens up a doorway for you who's sitting there, who's saying like, oh, my God, I'm in such a dark place. I'm, in, I'm like, am I going to get out of this place? And you're listening to this person who's been to hell who's been in that dark tunnel mm. and they're like, I came out of this and you're like grabbing hold of everything that they're saying. Right. Yes. It's like, Oh, that's how you did it. Yeah. And they're releasing in the atmosphere. Right. For you. Such an amazing opportunity for mm. you to, yeah. to walk in it. It's like, come on. It's like the gateway has been has been open. Yes. Step into your healing. Absolutely so. You're like, man, this thing is so explosive. It's yeah. so explosive. Very impactful. Because, oh, absolutely so. And that's why we know that um when when you when you bring in a certain spirit and you release it, it's going to affect the atmosphere. That you're in. You said it twice. (laughs) The atmosphere that you're in. And when those women are telling their stories of victory and healing, it impacts the atmosphere and it releases healing. It's really, it's putting, it's charging the atmosphere with healing, with healing. It really is. And what what I was going to say is when you, the little things you say, uh, it, it, it would go by me. Things like that or words like that would go by me uh, in my younger years when you say release into the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm woke, <laughs> <laughs> when you release into the atmosphere, you can download that that, yeah. that energy. You can download that knowledge of discernment, that knowledge of understanding, that knowledge of, I mean, the, 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 the discernment and understanding and the knowledge of love and anything that you want. Is in the atmosphere. You just know how you have the right frequency. You have to know how to tap in. And when these young women release this, you know this this energy, this this feeling of, you know, of love. And when you ask yourself, what do they get back? They get back threefold. They get back everything that they want because they've raised their vibration and they've gotten to a frequency where they can uh, access information. Or anybody can ex- access information at will. Mm, mm. Awesome, awesome, mm-hmm. awesome, awesome. This is great. This is great. I, I don't want to go too far off the tangent. And uh, I know. Tosca's I know. like, step into your healing. Uh, yes. And, you know, people have <laughs> yeah. to do that. Yes. Uh, and yes. Yvonne has said, it's, it is, you know, look for the blessing and not to be critical and judged. Listen and not judge. Listen and not judge. Sometimes I have a problem with that. And I, you, we, the first step into, uh, you know, with you know, trying to provide information or helping others is understand Judging that. Equipment. Say that you've done the same thing because <laughs> we all have. Yeah, and see, this is this is one thing we we put out front, right? We uh-huh. put this out front before we even start with her story. We dispense. Listen, because we create the atmosphere. We are creators of the atmosphere. We create the atmosphere to dispense judgment. We tell this is a no judgment zone. Mm. Right. Absolutely. Right. Right. This is a no judgment zone. This is a safe zone. Right. Understand that. Again, because (laughs) as healers, 
we are walking in the authority of healing. Yes. And we take by force in that room everything that would try to interfere with healing, yes. everything that would try to hinder and stop the healing, we take it by force and we dismiss it and cancel it out. Yes. Bridget, just the way you frame that, we take counsel out. It's almost as if you're saying, I command it. Because we, we're right. spirits. Absolutely. You're, when, you're, Absolutely. When, when you're asking or when you're praying to God, you cannot pray in a weak manner. Begging, oh, Lord, please help me, God. Oh, God. No, you command it. Yes. Because it's your divine we right. We have that authority. You we have the authority. the authority. We come in authority and power. Yes. And Absolutely. And authority yes. and power. Well, we decree and That's declare right. Thing. That's right. But okay. one thing... Bridget, oh, Pastor, Pastor Coins, Yvonne said something that I, it's worth you commenting on. Darkness is so easy and comes quickly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But before you know it, depression has set in. It's like, what yes, is, absolutely. why am I crying every day? Yep. Yep. Come home. What can we do yep. about that? Yep. Yep. Remind yourself. Listen to me. I know for, I can, I can, I can say this. And Tereska, you can go ahead. But remind yourself. For me, of who you are. In that moment, yes, we all can get a little down. We all have our little moments. Yeah, we do. Life, life can be hard. Let's let's be honest about that. Real talk, it can be hard. hard. It can be challenging. <laughs> it can be challenging. My God, yes. Down. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But understand that you possess the power, and you are a warrior. And that you are an overcomer. Mm. Wait a minute. I'll I be like, I'll be like, I put myself in, I, I think of myself in a boxing ring. I'm like, wait a minute, hold up. Right. Yeah. No, <laughs> let, me, let me, let me get my shoulders together. Wait a minute. Hold up here. This don't feel right. Wait a minute. This don't feel comfortable. Yeah. This garment I'm wearing right now of sadness or depression is, this doesn't really fit me. Wait a minute. Hold up. Let me let me Listen. let me change my clothes. Wait a minute. Listen, I'm I'm in this ring. Wait a minute. I got to knock this right on out. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me just say that you have to have that fight. I yes. mean, because I've been there, you mm. know, I've, I've been where the darkness is, you know, it can come down and you, it can really bring you down physically yes. where you really don't have that hope. But you yes. got to have yes. that fight because you got to know, yes. like you said, you got to know that you have the authority and that know who ha has you. That's and all right. you have to do is have you, all you have to do is say one, two, three, four, five, I'm getting up. I'm going to box. I'm going to do, I'm going to declare a thing. I'm going to uh, affirm a thing. And then I'm going to move forward and do the next thing. I'm going to sit in prayer with God and let him feed me. You know, I'm going to yes. meditate and allow my, my, my spirit to yeah. heal. You know, we're going to do all those things yes. to get out of, of that space. What we cannot do is succumb to the, the darkness. Because we're light. That's like right. Like she said, it, it's uncomfortable for light to, to come to darkness. It's un, you can't, it can't happen. It can't happen. It, there's no, no way it can happen. There's no way uh, that we let it happen. And in everything that's been said tonight, uh, <laughs> I want to add one thing with Pastor Gowen and what she's talked about is intention. Each one of these um, spiritual gifts are driven by your intention. Mm -hmm. You have to have intentions on uh, when you're when you're receiving knowledge, when you're speaking knowledge. It's your intent to speak and to receive knowledge. It's your intent to have good discernment and want to discern between good, bad, right, wrong. Mm -hmm. It's your intent to want to heal or want to be healed. It's, it, these when you yeah. take the time to go back and you just kind of break down what Pastor Goins is talking about. It is so beautiful. Yeah. It is a beautiful concept. Wow. It's beautiful abstracts of what she's saying. Um, and you can get there. And whoever this message uh, comes across to, you can get there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. I concur. <laughs> I concur. Well, you can get there. Absolutely. Well, Pastor Goins, I mean, we're going to give you the last, uh, the last word, and uh, then Taruska and I'll kind of wrap it up and and have a conversation about you while we have you backstage. But uh, you know, is there anything you want to leave our audience with? I mean, they were very, very active tonight. I just want to say um, 
be free, uh, be liberated, uh, be healed, mm. and celebrate all that that's you and all that has been given to you yes. and live it out to your fullest, I mean, your fullest potential and walk in your highest being. And that is your God self. Yes. Right. That right. is your God self. Oh, that's it, girl. <laughs> that's, All right. that's it. We are grateful uh, to have and you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, but before we, we, we uh, and uh, you may not be ready for this, but is there any kind of information or any kind of um, um, update on the programs that you're that you're putting together and um, you know j- just you know anything that you got going on? You can, you're always welcome to come back on the show um, to let keep people informed. Uh, we know that you do a wonderful work, wonderful work with women, uh, with girls, and you speak prophetically across the country. So you yes. always have a home here on Unwoke, and uh, I'm so excited that. Uh, You'll be joining us not only as a guest, but sometimes you'll come on as a as a contributor. And uh, I'm, I'm sure this audience would love you. Well, awesome. Well, we do have I have I'm, I met today with the planning meeting. So we got some things in, coming down the pipe um, in 2022. OK, so we're heading to Dallas. Yeah. All right. <laughs> in All right. March. <laughs> All right. We're getting there in March. <laughs> Awesome. So yeah, yeah, we'll keep you guys informed. Like I said, you can you can check us out on Facebook. We have Her Story Women's Symposium on Facebook and on IG um, at Her Story uh, WS. You can find us on IG. All right, Pastor Bridget Goins, thank you so much, and we want you to hang out in the back. Uh, you know, Tereska uh, again. Again, uh, you brought a uh, uh, pastor on the show. You were instrumental in putting this whole thing together. I need you, for yeah. you to kind of wrap it up a little bit and, 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 and sum this whole thing up for the audience. He's powerful. My, my whole thing would be is pretty much what, what you said and she said together. You know, we all yeah. there's so many more spiritual gifts that we all have and we that God has freely given us. And, and it's mainly about your intentions on, on what it is. That you know, and you really know what they are, but you really got to, and when we say have your intentions, that means to pay attention to uh, <laughs> uh, cultivate those gifts. Yeah. You know, you know, those things that, that happen to you and those things that you experience on a day to day basis. So I would behoove you to the audience to um, really do a little soul searching in that meditation. And uh, again, we're going to go back to meditation and prayer about those gifts and really be intentional about learning about them. And then, then start exercising them, and so they yeah. that you can master them eventually, and be like she said, be your highest God self. <laughs> yeah, and and, and I like to leave the audience with you know you hang on there, uh, Teresca, um, but I like to leave the audience with um, just something simple, and you know increase your ability to love, and that alone will raise your vibration. Uh, we, we, we take small things like that, uh, for granted and when you're trying to get into your prayer moment, when you're trying to get into your, your special place, infuse light and infuse love mentally. And I'm not telling you to go grab it off of a bookshelf or anything like that, but move it into your heart on a mental, on a spiritual level and try to work on some of these gifts. Try to say, I want to improve uh, my, my, my gift of discernment. I want to improve my gift of healing. I want to improve my gift of knowledge. But when you when you actually say that in your prayer, mentally move more light into your body. See your entire body filled with light. Then see your entire body filled with love. Then pray about these gifts. Pray about different things you want to happen into your life. It makes your vessel that much more clear. But you've been listening to I'm Woke. I'm your host, Jason Medlock, and we just had a fantastic guest, uh, uh, the um, the wonderful uh, uh, Pastor Bridget Goins. Um, good evening. I mean, good night to you guys, and um, we hope to see you next week. We will have a special guest, and I'll put that out there sometime here pretty soon. But again, good night. Thank you very much, and we hope that you enjoyed being with us tonight. Thank you.